unicorns in the Bible. This is video number 533. Crash course in intense Bible study. One of my favorite pastime activities. Intense dissecting Bible study. Over analyzing what is the meaning. I recently read this quote about over analyzing. Today I read something that someone said. Someone who overthinks is also someone who overloves, and I found that. Credit 3am thoughts. I overthink and I overlove God. His words, His wisdom. Okay, crash course time. God gave Moses a blueprint on exactly how to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. God was so specific. Let's turn this in a prayer point point should we please God give me also such specific exact guidance in everything that I do God instructed Moses to build the tabernacle with the Holy of Holies the secret place this secret place needed to have not one not two not three but four veils covering it the one was to be made with goat's hair the second one with ram skin the third one with the beautifully embroidered linens with cherubims embroidered on it. Cherubim is a fancy name for a type of angel. And the fourth layer was to be made from something that in Hebrew is called takash. Our Bibles incorrectly translate it to a badger, but it's not a badger. So many debates have been going on on exactly what a takash is. Some say it's something like a dolphin that was found only in the Sea of Reeds, the one Moses spread out for the Israelites to go through. The other theory is that it is, wait for it, unicorns. Beautifully rainbow decorated unicorns, horses with a horn on their head. According to the Talmud, a Jewish source, these unicorns only appeared for the period of the tabernacle project on the earth so that Moses and his team could use their skins for the veil for the tabernacle. Sometimes truth indeed is stranger than fiction. I love this theory. Sometimes God will make something beautiful, something mysterious, something secret appear in your life when it is useful. And then as soon as you have finished embracing it, using it, learning from it, God will remove your takash. I have had several takashas in my life. Last year, I had to learn a specific, specific difficult lesson in my life. God instructed a distant friend to take me away for a long weekend in the Western Cape. It was my takash. It was beautiful. It was magical. It was Elysian. We even danced on a dirt road around his car. It was better than a Hollywood love story for four days. I even made a whole Afrikaans video series on these four magical days. On the last night, however, I did learn a new facet of my personality, that I had a beautiful trauma in my heart of hearts. I wept like a baby, I took my guards down and decided to make work of this trauma, to let it heal, to seek the advice of professionals. After this start, this very intimate four days, my distant friend totally disappeared. At first I was devastated, I was disappointed, I was hurt, I was sad. Now months after this, after I had healed both wounds, I realized he was my beautiful, mysterious Takash. Today I can honestly say I'm grateful for God showing me that wound that needed healing in my life with the beautiful scenery of the mountains to the one side and the sea to the other side. It was heavenly, it was mysterious, it was my Takashi.